Hey guys, uh, thanks for having a watch. Those of you who thought this might be worth having a look. Uh, this is the first time I've actually filmed any of my trips into the woods, so uh, forgive me if it's not the greatest video. Um, I do apologise if you hear any cars or anything in the background, we are quite close to the road. Uh, but I'm just, I've come today into my friend John's woods. Uh, as you can see, it's nice and thick. Um, I'm going to go down, go down now, sort out a little camp, uh, string a hammock up, uh, get a bit of firewood and we're going to camp tonight. Um, there is an easier way to get to where I'm going, um, but the weather's not been great here recently, so it's going to be flooded and my feet are going to be soaked by the time I get there, so I thought I'd, I'd go through the woods, be a bit drier. It's a little bit slower going, but uh, it's worth it to have dry feet at the end. I'll uh, get on where I'm going and I'll, uh, I'll say hello to you when we get there. Here we go, guys. We've arrived at where I'm going. It's been a bit of a, a say, slog getting through that, but it's not too bad. It's worth it to get here with relatively dry feet. Uh, as you can see I have been here before and um, started building a little a little shelter which I'm hopefully going to do a, a little bit more with uh, on this trip. So uh, yes, as you see lovely place, got a little water source down there, a nice little clear space. This is literally the only clear space in these woods <laughs> for camping. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to start to set myself up. I'll speak to you in a minute. Hi guys, uh, just um, thought I'd give you a, a quick look at the pack I'm carrying. It's a uh, DD Hammox Bergen, uh, which I had for Christmas off, uh, off the girlfriend. Thank you very much. Um, I can't remember the specifics uh, and everything of it but uh, what I'll do is I'll put a link somewhere uh, where you can have a look take a look at it um, thought I'd give you just a quick run through of what's in here um, I won't do a, uh, a pack load out because um, as I say I want, it's, everything's a little bit damp so I don't want to get everything out on the ground I want to get everything set up and uh, get myself ready um, in this front part here um, I've got uh, in that pouch there I've got a, a little possibles pouch which has got my first aid kit, it's got um, some toiletries in there, um, medication, um, little things like that. Uh, in the main part uh, I've got my spare clothes, um, it's probably going to be a bit chilly tonight um, so I've got myself a, a wool base layer to put on, uh, I've got myself a, a spare pair of trousers to put on um, and in the side there I've got some, some woolly thermal socks as well to keep myself nice and warm. Uh, got myself a little axe as we're out in the woods. Obviously, I'm um, going to need that to split some firewood later. Um, I do have a buck saw with me as well, which is hanging on the shelter over there, um, which I'm going to use to cut down uh, some of the dead standing trees to use for firewood later. Um, I've got two pouches on the side. Um, as I say, this DD Bergen comes with the, the two side pouches and the, the action pack. They all actually come off. Uh, in one pouch, um, I've got my fire kit. Uh, I've got some extra cordage, there's um, a rain cover, although this bag is rain resistant, uh, there is a rain cover in there um, as well which I can use to put stuff on later because as I say the ground is wet. Um, on the other side then, I've got, I can't remember what I've got actually, let's have a quick look. Uh, yeah, I've got um, a spare stuff sack, uh, just for, you know, put dirty clothes, stuff like that, a bit rubbish in or something. Um, I've got some wet wipes um, and then I've got uh, an old hammock, an old ch cheap parachute style hammock um, which I've had modified uh, to use with a tripod to turn it into a camp chair. Uh, there is a zip lid on the top of this bag which has got my book to read with later, it's got my grill so I can cook my food later on and then in the main part of the bag then I haven't really got a lot of things in there. I've got um, my hammock, my tarp, my underquilt for the hammocks, as I say, it's going to be cold later. Um, and I've got my food and uh, a little hobo stove as well, uh, in case I've got to cook under the tarp, because it, you know if it does rain and I can't use the fire. Um, so yeah, so that's a... Oh, and the sleeping bag I've got, um, I can't show you at the moment because the camera's actually leaning on it. <laughs> uh, but it's, a, it's an ex-military Arctic bag, goes down to about minus 20. So, 
hopefully even if it does get cold tonight it should be nice and warm um, so yeah so I'm gonna start slinging up my uh, my top and my hammock and I'll do my best as I say to, to film bits and pieces uh, I don't have a tripod or anything to stand the the camera on it's actually just my phone um, so hopefully it won't be too bad Uh, there you go guys, just thought I'd show you quickly what I'm going to be stringing up. It's, uh, as you can tell, big fan of DD Hammocks, uh, not sponsored by them, uh, paid, you know, bought everything myself or had it bought for me as a gift, uh, but just think they do make very good products. Um, I've got the DD Hammocks 3x3 three three meter tarp, which is going to be my shelter, and then my bed for the evening is the DD Travel Hammock Bivy. Um, I also forgot to say, I do have a a little water bottle, bottle with me as well and of course uh, got myself got the old knife with me as well to help me do a few things around camp uh, yeah so uh, speak to you in a minute um, just thought I'd take two seconds to show you um, how I've got my tarp rigged up um, I have got it uh, set up in a way which makes it a lot easier to string up um, what I've actually got in here is got a hunk of uh, paracord which is my ridge line um, which has got a couple of prussic knots in it already um, loop at the end and everything and it's attached to just the middle loop on the top um, which allows me to string it up nice and quickly um, without having to take it out of the waterproof bag straight away so it means you keep everything neat and tidy and it's just a bit more efficient um, way of doing everything. So uh, yeah, I'll show you how that works. I'll try, as I say, I'll try and get close-ups of the knots and everything I use. Um, but if I do miss anything, um, please, you know, let me know in the comments, and I'll try and make sure I include them for next time we do a video. All right. So what I've done is I've uh, pulled out some of the cord out of the hank. Um, I've tied it in a way which means that it's nice, easy, quick release as well, so I can just pull that straight out. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to actually film myself tying the knot, but I'll try my best to describe it as I'm doing it. Uh, so basically, I'm just around the tree. Um, I like to go so just about overhead height, because I'm quite tall. Um, so what I do is go around the tree with the free end, just go over my hand, holding the other end as well, wrap the free end around my fingers, twist it over the original end, and try and pull it through um, which just gives me a little slider knot which tightens up nicely um, which becomes a, a quick release knot then as well so I've got the little tail end there that I can pull out to release it quickly once I tie the other side I'll come back uh, and I'll put a little well, I'll do it now actually put a little half hitch in there um, just to stop it pulling itself free there we go apologies if it doesn't uh, look very efficient I'm uh, not used to tying it from this side I'm trying to tie it so that you can see what I'm doing uh, so I'm going to go over the other side now and we'll uh, use a different style of knot on the other side to try and turn you around see if you can see what we're doing Some more cord out of our hank. There we go. So yeah, you can see where we are. So what I like to do is obviously pull it all loose. I just find it's a bit easier to, to do everything. Um, I'm going to come around this side. And what I like, like to use on this side is a, a trucker style hitch. So we'll pull out the twigs. So we'll go over the tree. Get the line nice and tight. And if you can just about see it swinging in the background there, the bag is uh, still attached with the hammock in it. So that's where we want it. So we find our spot there to 
tie a little loop. And then we can bring this free end round. Pull it through the loop. have a bit too much free paracord, never mind. Right, so tighten that up. Make sure that's nice and high. A little bit low, so we'll hold it up a little bit. There we go. Pull that nice and tight. And then we'll just do a nice easy knot on the end there, a little half hitch. Just to tighten that up. And then another little half hitch in there, stop it pulling itself out. And we just, as I say, got quite a lot of loose end there. So I'll just hank that up. So it's out of the way. I'll just tie a little knot at the end. Yep, keep that nice and safe. Uh, as I said, Tap is actually still in the bag, hanging up here, nice and safe, nice and dry. And all I've got to do now is just pull it out. And there it hang. Now then, going back to what I said earlier, I've got two Prusik knots on this line already tied up. All I have to do now is get the ends of my tarp and I need a little stick to put in the Prusik knot. Here's one I prepared earlier. And we'll just put the knot through the tag in the loop, put our stick through the knot and then pull that over there. And we'll go over to the other side, do the same thing, and then we can just pull it tight. Press it through the tag, and stick in there, and then pull that nice and tight. And that's up nice and easy. Now, as I said, uh, the ridge line I've got just goes through the middle tag on the, the tarp there, which, as I say, allows me to just hang the bag up, keep everything nice and safe and off the ground. But it also means that when I go to attach the Prusik knots and uh, tighten it, it's a lot easier to just move it side to side um, so I can adjust it nice and easily. Um, I'm going to tie it down our own corners. Um, I've got got some guy lines attached to all four corners. Got a couple of little temp pegs with me. Uh, take me two minutes now. Put that in. I won't bother showing you that. It's, everybody knows how to put a temp peg in. Um, so yeah, so I'll do that and I'll get back to you in a minute. Okay, what I've done, guys. Um, I did say I was going to tie the corners of the tarp down, but what I've decided to do instead um, is put my hammock up first. And you can just see it in the, the hammock sleeve there. Um, reason being, as you can see, the tarp is actually slightly off to cover the hammock. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to adjust it and I'll show you how easy it is uh, using those Prusik knots like I showed you just now. And I'll do it quickly because it's starting to rain a little bit. Um, so what I'm going to do is just pull that Prusik over a little bit. And then we'll come over this side. Stretch it out on this side, and then hopefully, you can see we've moved it across. Okay, so I'm going to finish setting up now because, as I say, it's starting to rain a bit. 
and I'll speak to you. Hey there guys, um, right, I've got the tarp and everything all secured and set up now. Um, I'll just turn you around, if you can see. Uh, but my hammock's hanging up, it's still in the, um, the hammock sleeve at the moment. The reason being, I'm gonna be under the tarp tonight, so this is gonna be my area where I'm gonna be doing bits and pieces, so I don't, the hammock sort of in my face, so I'll, I'll sort that out later. Um, just give you a quick look at um, the way I've tied the knots there. Um, I don't know if you can see very well, it's an, an adjustable knot it is, which actually slides up and down, so if in the night everything's uh, moving around, I can get out and, and adjust it. Um, I've actually got it, um, got the some poles there just to hold that front bit up a bit, just to give me a bit more room until I go to bed and then I'll I'll put them all down then. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some firewood now. Um, I don't know if you can see, but all my stuff there, the uh, the Arctic uh, um, ex-military sleeping bag I've got comes with a bivy bag. So I've got that on the ground and that's what everything's resting on. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go get some firewood now so we can cook some food later. All right then guys, so as I said, I'm out looking for a bit of firewood. Uh, and I've come across this nice bit of dead standing wood here, so I'm going to cut that down. Um, there is a way to check that it's dead standing. Um, I hope I'm doing it right. I've uh, obviously stolen it from other people that I've watched on YouTube. Um, but obviously, I mean, to look at it first, you can see straight away up the top bits there, they're looking a bit, a bit dry and, and as if they're dying. Um, but if you get closer, um, sometimes you can hear, you know, it's, it's quite solid, quite dense. But if you take your knife and just make a little cut, um, even in a green tree, if you do this, it's not going to do much damage. But you can see there, there's no green or anything. If this was still alive, that bit would be all nice and white and you'd have a, a nice green around the edge. So this is a perfect piece. It's going to be my firewood. There was me worrying about a bit of rain. And as you can see, it's hailing. That should be an interesting night. <laughs> okay, so um, been and collected some firewood. Um, I've got a load. You see it just on the ground there, ready to to process and cut up. I have uh, been and got some and cut it up already. Uh, but as the the rule says, when you think you've got enough, go and get more. Um, I'm not really using the fire for heat tonight, so I don't need a huge pile of wood. Um, I'm only going to be using it to cook, and I've got a nice steak to cook uh, for my dinner tonight. Um, so I want to get enough wood so I can burn the wood down, so I can cook on the coals, cook my steak up, and um, just have a nice evening by the fire. And then obviously just before I go to bed then I'll let it burn down. Um, so I don't really need a huge amount of wood. Um, so what I'm going to do now, before I process what I've got here now, I'm going to go down to the, the stream and fill my water bottle up because I'm quite thirsty. And uh, it's been a little while since I've had a little drink, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna go get some water. Okay, so um, down by the stream now. Uh, come to get myself some water because my uh, canteen's empty. If I wanna wanna brew later, then I uh, need to get some water. What I've brought with me, and this is the first time I've used it, so bear with me. Um, it's a little pump filter. Um, it's got a ceramic filter in it, I believe and it's supposed to be uh, the sort of filter that you can pump the water into straight into your bottle canteen whatever and you're able to drink it without having to boil it obviously if you can boil it it's uh, an added extra um, but we'll give it a go and, and see how it works and we'll just get ourselves ready that pipe goes into the bottle Put that there. That one. That pipe there. Oops. So let's turn this around so you can see what I'm doing. There you go. Just about to see what I'm doing. So we'll put that. Rest that pipe in the water. Go. I mean, right, with the instructions it says to pump 
some out first before you actually start filling your bottle. So we'll give that a go just to get everything flowing. That back in there. Oh, there we go. Feel some water coming through now. So we've got a pump that says at least a litre through. Um, just to get everything working. Flat them, pipe this, that's alright. So we keep going. Let's have a go. So pipes in my bottle and let's start filling her up. It's, uh, I think it might take a little while. <laughs> it's uh, quite labour intensive this, it's not like just filling it up and In a, a tab or some iodine in it. Yeah, I think this is going to take a while, so I'll get back with you in a minute. Okay, so uh, finally filled the bottle. I uh, haven't tried it yet. Um, it did take a little bit, bit of a while, to be honest. Um, as I say, it's the first time I've used that, that pump filter. Um, I might think about uh, finding uh, something else, investing in something else a bit quicker, a bit easier, to be honest with you, because it's quite tiring. You've got to stand there for a good five minutes pumping it to fill, fill the bottle up. But uh, yeah, according to the According to the hype, this should be good to drink, so let's give it a go. I'll tell you what, it actually tastes really nice. <laughs> I don't know whether it's because I'm really thirsty or not, but that actually tastes really good. Um, and it's completely clear as well, as you can see. Um, the pump, uh, just in case anybody's interested in uh, spending lots of time pumping their water out of the river. Um, I think I had it from eBay. Uh, it says uh, on the pump itself, it says pure and easy, uh, and on the case, it comes with a little little hard case to put it in. Uh, I don't know if you can read it, um, but it says uh, soldier water filter. So uh, and it all fits in there. Uh, the only thing I'm thinking about though is because obviously when you put it in there, the pipe that the clean water comes out of goes back into the same place as the pipe that goes into the dirty, well, I say dirty water, but water that might be contaminated, um, which is again another reason why I think I might look at something else, like a soya squeeze bottle or something like that, but I don't know, we'll see, see how we go. actually sawing through a knot. Never mind. These things are sent to test us. Um, I have already cut a little pile 
of firewood there, but as I was cutting it, uh, I kind of noticed it's quite punky and a little bit damp. Um, well, not so much damp, but very, very punky. Um, so I don't know how well that's going to burn. But luckily, this one's nice and dense, nice and dry. And the logs I got earlier is the same. So we should get a nice, nice bed of coals going to cook, cut the steak. And uh, yeah, we'll see. Chuck a few of them on, see how they do. Anyway, back to sawing. <laughs> Camp chores, camp chores. Gotta love camp chores. <laughs> Do enjoy me some good old camp chores. Okay, so, uh, Oh, I've been chopping up some firewood. It's true what they say. Collecting firewood really does warm me up more than once. You get a sweat on fetching it, cutting it down, processing it, which is what I've done there. And as you can see, I've got some nice pile of logs there, which will do me for food. Um, I have got that other little pile over there, which as I say, is, is a little bit punky, but we'll see how they go now. Um, I'm sure they'll burn once the fire's going, once it's nice and hot. Um, two seconds break now, catch my breath. And then, uh, say it's starting to get dark now, so I'll start thinking about actually lighting the fire and getting some food on. Uh, it's starting to get a bit dark now. Um, I'm nearly ready to write, light the fire. As I say, I've got all the, the firewood and I've collected a load of uh, bits of kindling and stuff like that to get it going, so I've got all my my fire prep done and do my fire lay in a minute um, was gonna sh film light in the fire but obviously I've lost the light now so uh, so I probably won't do that but I'll uh, I'll take a little video after once it's actually going and uh, yeah keep you updated on how I'm going and there we go fire is going nicely nice and big just gonna Burn that down a little bit, get some embers going, get some coals, and then we can start cooking our lovely steak. Lovely, lovely steak, which is sitting right there in the bag, waiting to be devoured. Let's see what we got here. We've got a lovely ribeye steak got from the butchers in Tembe. So looking forward to that. Getting pretty hungry now, guys. I'm uh, waiting for the, the fire to sort of burn burn up a little bit and create some embers so I can get my steak on. Got my pot boiling, boiling some hot water for... Uh, i got a hot chocolate there waiting, so I look forward to that, warm myself up a little bit. And uh, yeah, whilst that's all doing what it's doing, there's not a lot I can do, so I'm gonna sit and read myself a little book. It's, uh, what is it? It's Alex Cross's Trial uh, by James Patterson. I have read one of his books before. Uh, I think it was called Kill Alex Cross. Um, and I did quite, I did really enjoy it. To be honest with you, it was 
one of those books that you really, really cannot put down. Um, although it was quite funny, the, the original book was actually gifted to me from my father. Um, and I was reading it, reading it and taking it everywhere. And I ended up actually taking it to the park when I took uh, my kids to the park. And I was sat on the bench reading it. And uh, I accidentally went and left it there. And I was absolutely gutted. But luckily, it was around the time of my birthday and somebody had actually bought me a WH Smith's uh, voucher. So I went in and <laughs> although I only had, well, less than half of the book left, I had to buy it and I had to find out how it finished. Um, but yeah, so I'm hoping that this book's just as good. Um, yeah, write a little comment, let me know if you've read it, what you think about it. And, uh, you know, if you've got any other books that you recommend, that would be greatly appreciated, guys. Oh, I don't know if you can hear it. It sounds to me like my water's boiled. Let's have a little look. Oh, she's not far off. She's getting there a little bit longer. Cannot wait. She's getting a bit of hot chocolate in me. This fire's going lovely now. It's really nice and warm sat here by the fire. It's actually kicking off some good light as well. Turn that off. You can sort of, well, it was kicking off some, <laughs> some good light. Um, but yeah, nothing better than sitting by the fire. Just waiting for my water to boil now. Boil, boil! Okay, folks, it's time. That fire is nice and hot. My steak is ready to be cooked. I am starving and I ain't waiting no longer. And a lovely ribeye. A bit of smoke in the eye there. Oop. Yeah, boy. And if you can see that, there we go. Look at that bad boy. That is going in my belly. Oh, yeah. Listen to that. Sake stizzle. Sake stizzle. Sake stizzle. <laughs> you can tell I'm hungry. Everything's funny. Listen to that steak sizzle. It is cooking. I'll tell you what, that hot chocolate's going down a treat as well. Needed that. Right. Just wanted to say as well, I don't know if you can see or if you notice, but obviously. If I was to put that steak straight on the fire, then obviously it's, it's not going to cook through, it's going to burn um, the surface of the steak straight away, so it's not going to cook nicely, so I'm going to end up eating burnt meat. Um, but what I've done is I've put, off, put it off to the side, I've leaned it up against a log that's not on the fire, um, but it's just cooking over the coals on the side there, um, so it's just cooking nicely off that. And then once those ones, the fire sort of dies down a bit there, if, if it's not done yet, I can move that over onto the coals there and then boost up the fire on that side again then to get the, get the whole thing going. Um, I know I'm talking a lot about the steak, but I'm, I want the steak. Steak, steak, steak. I'm not going to lie to you. I did take a little sneaky bite of that steak. I couldn't, couldn't wait any longer for it. Um, it's not quite done. It's nearly there, but oh my god, that just tasted so good. Um, literally, it's gonna be a couple of minutes, and then I am cutting into that bad boy. I don't care whether it's done or not. It just smells amazing, and listening to it sizzling just makes me even more and more hungry. Um, so yeah, I'm having it. Oh yes, look at that, that is absolutely beautiful, I made myself, I don't know if you can see it, just a little, little table just out of a log, and then just to sort of perch myself onto, and just have something to lean into, just cut into this bad boy, right, let's have a look.
full yes she's done look at that beautiful that is what you call a steak yum so let's just try it out Mm. Oh yeah. Mm. That is so good. My mother always told me not to speak with my mouth full. So I'm gonna eat this bad boy. Bye. There we go, just building the fire back up now. So I've uh, finished my dinner. It was absolutely delicious. I uh, can't really see me there. Um, a bit close to the fire, there we go, you can just about see me now. Um, yeah, it was absolutely delicious, really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, build a build a fire up now, just warm myself up. Uh, I'm gonna go to bed soon, so I'll say goodnight to you now and uh, see you all in the morning. Hey guys, um, on my way home now, apologies that I haven't got any videos of uh, the things I've done this morning but uh, the battery ran out on my phone last night so I wasn't able to film anything, I've just uh, got some battery now as I've got back in the car, um, but basically um, I had a pretty good night's sleep, wasn't too cold, went to bed about I don't know, half nine, woke up about half eleven for a pee, uh, which wasn't the, the most fun. I uh, should have had a bottle in with me, save me getting out, but never mind. Um, went back to bed then, I think I slept until about half six. Just dozed until about eight o'clock, then I got up, uh, packed a few things away, then made myself a bit of breakfast, just boiled up some water on the hobo stove rather than lighting a big fire. Uh, made myself a bit of porridge. Uh, luckily, it did rain a little bit last night, so I put my canteen cup and my bottle outside so I managed to collect some rainwater for breakfast this morning so I didn't have to um, didn't have to go down to the river to go and get any water uh, which seemed to be a bit of time pumping um, but yeah and then just packed everything away hiked out which is a good hike because it's, it's quite steep and uh, yeah on my way home so uh, hope you enjoyed the video um, I'm gonna try and do a few more maybe uh, invest in a better camera so I can do some get some better shots and everything um, but yeah hopefully see you soon bye guys